Hello and welcome to the last game from the TCC Super Final. Here are the final standings. Stockfish managed to win the Super Final. After 100 end games, he managed 9 extra wins. Quite an impressive performance. He managed to win 12 times with white and twice with black. Elishtein managed 5 wins with white. So, quite a strong final, but in the end, uh, Stockfish proved to be better. This is game 100 now, and Stockfish's last win in a Sicilian defense. The game started with e4, c5, and now we have knight c3, a closed Sicilian position. If white doesn't go for knight f3 and d4 trying to open the d file, then uh, we get a, a closed Sicilian position. However, after knight c6, we have knight f3 and now g6. And here the book says d4 and we transpose back to an open Sicilian. And now after bishop g7, we have an accelerated dragon. The game now continued with bishop e3, defending the knight and also the d4 square below it. Knight f6 and now bishop c4, the modern bishop c4 variation where white develops this bishop to this very very nice diagonal and it's also kind of tempting black to play here knight a5 and imagine someone's face playing this with black when white takes now on f7 and uh, the point is here that if the king takes then e5 is very very strong for white when the knight doesn't have squares it can go to d5 or e4 because it's guarded by the knight on c3 g4 is guarded by the queen and if the knight goes to h5, then runs into g4 and the knight is lost. And actually going back is not better either, because after knight back, white has knight e6. The knight is attacking this queen, and the pawn is pinned. If pawn takes, then queen takes on d8, and white wins. And the queen doesn't have squares. c7 and b6 are guarded. So this doesn't leave any other options for black than taking on e6 with the king. But then the king gets made it after queen d5 check, king f5 and g4. We can see that the king is uh, is forced to, to take on uh, g4. And then after rook g1, he has two squares available. But if he goes to f5, then he gets made it on g5. And if it goes to the h5, then uh, gets made it after bishop g5 and queen f3. And um, going with the knight to uh, g8 here instead of e8 is not much better either because the same knight e6 works here at least the queen has the e8 square but now after knight c7 the queen is hit again it doesn't matter which way it goes because white continues with queen d4 check and if now the king goes back then the queen gets lost again after knight e6 check and if instead black plays e6 then the knight takes still and uh, after queen e7, knight c7 is strong again. After the king moves back, white has now bishop c5, winning the queen anyway. So white wins. So actually after e5, here in this position, best for black is just to allow white to take back the piece and play here knight c4. But anyway, after pawn takes, bishop takes and queen f3, white's position is much better. So after bishop c4, instead of knight a5 attacking the bishop, we have first castles. And now after bishop b3, knight a5 still doesn't work because now this bishop is defended and e5 works just as well as before. If uh, the knight moves back, then uh, bishop f7 uh, and knight e6 works again. And if the knight takes on b3, then after pawn takes, knight takes rook and pawn takes bishop, Black has nothing better than king takes pawn and white is still winning. He will pick up this knight and he has two knights versus a rook. And black's king is too weak. White is actually winning in this position. So after bishop b3 we don't have knight a5. We have d6 instead. And now knight g4 uh, would be possible hitting this bishop. So we have now f3. Bishop d7, remember we're still in the book moves. And now after queen d2, white is preparing long castles. We have rook c8 occupying the open c file. Long castles 
and now knight e5. Black is uh, preparing knight c4, this well-known maneuver in the Sicilian defense where the knight is hitting these two and is forcing the light squared bishop to exchange itself for the knight. But here now after king b1, which is the last book move, we don't have knight c4, instead Elishtein preferred to play here a6. And now Stockfish continued very very energetically with h4, intending to play h5 and open the h5 for an attack. For example, if Elishtein would have continued here with b5, intending b4 and so on, then h5 would be already very very strong. The point is that if the knight takes, then after g4 the knight has to go back and white invested a pawn, but now the h file is opened up and after bishop h6 white has a very very strong attack here. For example, if black plays something bad like a5, then white wants to develop the attack in the following way. Take out the bishop and after king takes play queen h6 check. And after the king moves back, white would love to, uh, to mate here on h7, but this knight on f6 defends it. So all white needs to do is to challenge this knight. Now g5 doesn't work here because then the knight can jump to h5 and block the h5. However, after rook takes on h5, white is still better. But much better than g5 is to actually play here knight d5. And now this knight is in trouble. White is intending to take here on f6 and then mate on h7 and white wins. If instead of the very bad a5, uh, black tries here b4 attacking this knight, then white still wins because after bishop takes on g7 and pawn takes on c3, white can play queen h6 and yes, now there's no knight d5 challenging this knight, but the bishop from g7 can still take out this knight and white can mate on h7. So we can see that uh, after h4, black can't really allow h5 here. He has to defend uh, accurately and Elishtein played here h5. But we have g4 intending to uh, open the g file. We have h takes on g4 and now h5, the point. This h pawn is now unblocked and he wants to take on g6 again. We now have knight takes on h5. And this position has been played before uh, between GMs. And in most of these games, rook g1 and bishop h6 was the continuation. Carson has a, a couple of games here. Unfortunately for him, he lost most of them. Here, uh, both Anand and Topalov played rook g1 against him and managed to win. Dominguez tried bishop h6 once and the game was a draw. But in this game, Stockfish came up with a novelty. He played here knight d5. And this move has a lot of upsides, but one of them is that removes the knight from the c3 square and is not allowing the rook to sack itself for that, uh, for that knight. And actually in this position, Elishtein continued with rook c5, intending to actually take out the knight if needed. Stockfish now continued with bishop g5, attacking this pawn. We have rook e8 defending and now we have f takes on g4, bishop takes on g4 and rook g1. Queen d7 defending the bishop and now queen f2. And here Stockfish already intends to play knight f4 and attack this blockading knight on h5. And the queen move to f2 was needed in order to prevent knight c4 hitting this queen with tempo. Now knight f4 is a real threat, so actually Elishtein took out this knight now and we have bishop takes e6, bishop back. And now since this bishop is, is kind of loose here, he's only defended by this knight and he doesn't really have squares to go to, rook h4 could come hitting that bishop again. So here Elishtein played now d5, uh, d5 in order to... Um, to allow this queen now to defend this bishop and in some variations this bishop could also maybe go to f5. Stockfish continued with rook e1 and now we have rook c8, rook h4, knight c6 and now we have the exchange of the knights and now king a1, prophylactic move, queen f5, Elishtein tries to exchange the queens but Stockfish avoids and it also attacks this uh, bishop on g4. We have knight f6, and here bishop f6 is uh, kind of tempting. It looks like white wins a piece here, but actually after queen f6, 
black threatens mate on b2 and that allows black to save this bishop so instead of bishop takes stockfish actually played bishop d2 and we reached this very interesting position where stockfish was uh, expecting c5 here where he, he could uh, still maintain an edge but Elishtein actually surprised him with g5 hitting this rook and actually after rook h2 they both evaluated this position again as equal Elishtein continued with knight e4 and now we have c3 bishop f3 bishop d1 exchanging the bishops rook e8 bishop c1 f6 rook e1 rook e5 rook e2 rook e7 and now queen b6 going for some pawns but the queen goes back to defend those we have c4 now attacking on d5 queen b7 defending also trying a queen exchange stockfish avoids that we have now king f7 queen a3 and now g4 Elishtein's hopes are these two pawns here on the king side that he wishes to advance and hopes that uh, by doing so uh, these pawns will um, compensate for being down in exchange stockfish now continued with rook f1 king g6 c takes on d5 c takes on d5 and now rook g2 and we have f5 and these pawns are really coming up the board but uh, there's more and more space around the black king and the king is more and more exposed we have queen h3 queen b5 now hitting the rook rook h1 king f6 and now queen h7 and we reached another interesting position where stockfish was actually expecting here d4 with equality where he was intending to continue rook c2 and then after king e5 rook c8 bishop f6 queen g6 queen d7 rook 8 and uh, queen somewhere let's let's say c6 and it's very difficult to to get something against the black king here it's it's very nicely shielded uh, by all these pieces so stockfish was evaluating this as, as equal however instead of d4 Hellishtein played here king e6 allowing queen g6 check and apparently everything changes now and stockfish evaluates this as plus two for white while Elishtein still thinks uh, this is uh, mostly equal he continued with bishop f6 but now we have rook h5 hitting here we have queen f1 defending the f5 square also attacking g2 and uh, the bishop on c1 we have queen g8 check and then rook c2 defending everything g3 though and uh, even though this, this pawn looks dangerous stockfish thinks that this is completely winning now for white we have queen b8 check king d4 rook h6 now bishop g5 queen b4 check king e5 and <clears throat> stockfish evaluates this already at plus 5.4 Elishtein evaluates it though at 0, 0.0 because he didn't see anything better here for white than uh, endless checks with queen b8 check king d4 queen b6 check king e5 queen b8 check and so on however after um, king e5 here stockfish surprised him with rook g6 attacking this bishop that is defending the rook attacked by the queen and apparently this situation combined with the fact that the dark squares around the black king are, are weak is enough for white to win trying bishop takes on c1 here doesn't work hoping to uh, to, to move this bishop away with mate doesn't work because now queen uh, can take on e7 with check and after king d4 there's queen a7 check and after king e5 queen c7 check and after king d4 white takes this bishop on c1 and white wins instead of bishop takes on c1 bishop h4 is not much better either because now stockfish has queen b8 check and then queen h8 check and even though after king d3 picking up this bishop is not yet possible white can continue with king b1 defending the rook and now after queen d1 threatening mate on c2 and then taking on c1 stockfish would have queen c8 defending the rook and attacking this pawn on h6 threatening this check and the black king is, is too exposed so instead of these bishop moves Elishtein continued with the best move which is queen b5 trying to exchange the queens and not giving stockfish any time to uh, do any tricks but stockfish now played 
queen a3 and now we have bishop h4 now there's no uh, queen b8 check queen h8 and picking up the bishop anymore but we have rook c6 and now after g2 it looks like this pawn is, is maybe going to queen because if rook takes here then queen picks up the rook on c6 but actually after queen f3 promoting this pawn doesn't work because after queen f4 check king d4 rook takes on g1 and queen takes on c6 white has bishop e3 check pretty much forcing the king eventually to the c file and then rook c1 picks up the queen and white wins so instead of queening immediately Elishtein played here queen f1 first which uh, prevents queen f4 check pins this bishop and uh, also defends the pawn on g2 but now stockfish played another strong move queen h5 intending to check on a8 so for example if we have again Elishtein queening then queen h8 is strong and the king doesn't have squares to move to f4 and d4 are taken away and so are the squares on the on the sixth rank and uh, Elishtein would be forced here to block the check but then there's queen b8 check and after king d4 now the rook could take on g1 and after queen takes white has queen b6 winning the queen and uh, white wins again so promoting the pawn still doesn't work we have rook e8 guarding the h8 square but now stockfish took the pawn on g2 and now if queen takes here then queen takes rook on e8 and white wins instead we have rook e6 but now stockfish has this check on h8 and after rook f6 we have queen b8 check king d4 queen b4 check king e5 and now finally after queen e7 check the game was finally adjudicated in stockfish's favor they both considered this position completely hopeless for black so the game was ended here the game could have um, continued with the king going to d4 but here after rook c2 white has some um, very nasty threats with uh, rook d2 check and now if the king goes to e3 then rook d1 check is strong picking up the queen and if the knight takes on d2 instead then after rook d2 the king is asked to go to c4 and then rook c2 check and if the king comes back then queen e3 mates on d2 or c3 and if the king goes to uh, b5 then there's queen c5 check and b3 mate so actually best for black here after um, rook c2 is to play bishop e1 and guard this uh, checking square on d2 but now white has queen a7 check and after king e5 rook g1 and uh, white wins this bishop the queen can't defend it anymore the best is actually queen takes on g1 but then after queen takes on g1 white has a, a huge material advantage and uh, black's position is of course hopeless a very nice final game in the tcc super final stockfish was quite convincing in this final especially in tactical positions stockfish is a complete monster it's very difficult for a neural network engine to to be able to calculate so accurately and so far as um, stockfish can do i would like to thank to rene adolf mark sebastian todor radu and guilherme for their contribution to my channel please subscribe like and share and check out some of the other games thanks for watching and see you soon bye bye